So what are some lessons that Western comics and independent comic creators can learn from manga in terms of how they market and connect with their customers? There's actually quite a bit to learn, so we're going to go into that. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, recently, I talked about, on Twitter, I talked a bit about how manga was doing a bit of a better job, in my opinion, of connecting with young audiences, with new comic readers. And in this case, is, I think there's a difference between kind of young comic readers, kind of first-time comic readers who are young, and first-time comic readers just in general. And I would say that manga does a, a reasonably good job of connecting with both groups. Uh, they, there is a, I, I just notice it from how when people come in and they're curious, they don't really have any experience beyond comics uh, that, that a lot of people do. It's not like a lapsed comic reader who's wanting to come in and collect some new things or somebody who's wanting to get back into the hobby. Nothing like that. This is somebody who is uh, coming into comics for the first time. They've, maybe they've seen some movies. Maybe they've, they've, they know comics exist and they're looking for something to pick up. And there's a handful of things about manga. I mean, first of all, just how it's packaged. It's packaged in a way that is a neat, tidy, small, looks like an iPad mini-sized book that is easy to carry, easy to cart around, feels durable. This is going to sound really weird. It feels like a book. And I, I hadn't put this together until somebody kind of pointed this out to me, that comics are in this kind of, flimsy magazine format. They're, they're paper-ish size. They, they're kind of stapled together. They look like you could crumple them up and break them, and there's some kind of dim awareness in terms of new comic collectors and people buying comics for the first time that maybe this is valuable, so you shouldn't just, you know, casually toss it on a chair or treat it, you know, in a way that is, um, is not you know, more careful. And so it creates this somewhat of an awkward purchase to, to take and to have and to kind of carry around. You can't carry around a comic. Like if you're walking to the bus stop and you're, you're carrying a comic, it's just kind of an awkward thing to carry. You're worried about if it gets damaged. You're worrying about all kinds of things. But manga, in particular manga that's distributed here in the West, is almost perfect book size. It feels like it's got a harder cover. The interior pages don't look as, as they look both lower quality because they're often black and white, sometimes in flimsier paper, but also as simultaneously, they look like they're more weather resistant in this weird way. Or, or, but I guess you just don't care. You could put this manga kind of, you could throw it on the seat and if it gets some dirt on it or gets scratched up, you know, nobody's really caring. You don't think that you're buying something that needs to be preserved. You're buying something to be treated casually and therefore taken more places and, and go with you. And that's a bit of a plus. But beyond that, if you're a comic creator, an indie creator, and you're looking to find something, well, how do you catch people? Well, first off, what a lot of manga titles do, and this flies under the radar, you don't realize this unless you actually go looking for it, is the kind of back cover solicitation, if it has it, or interior first couple pages of the manga of the book, actually recap or introduce the summary not like comics do. It's, you know, there's a distinct difference. Pick up, if you will, kind of the latest issue of Fantastic Four and put it there on the table and then pick up a, a, you know, one of the manga collections of My Hero Academia or something like that and put them next to each other and then go to kind of the first page or the summary, the recap that people are going to thumb to when they're trying to determine, is this something for me? Should I pick this up and give it a try? And notice some very distinct differences. Fantastic Four even though it's, uh, it's, in theory, a recap of the storyline, it also is kind of assuming you're an insider. It presents itself as already assuming you know about comics, you understand comics, you're, you're there to buy comics. It's, it's taking a leap past the first step, which is, why would I buy a comic in the first place? And if you turn over to uh, Naruto or One Piece or My Hero Academia or any of these, you'll notice that there's a much more like a book. They're taking lessons from, from books and they're trying to pitch you on, here's a kind of flavor, here's the feel of what you've got here, here's kind of the award-winning team. And they'll, they'll certainly 
they don't pander to you. This is where I feel like comics kind of get into the uncanny valley of doing it just wrong in both directions. They, they don't um, provide enough information for first-time viewers to really feel like they're, they're understanding what they're buying. And at the same time, they're also kind of spoon-feeding information you already know. So put it this way. If you're picking up the Fantastic Four, I'm just going to use this as my example, but this would be true of Superman and kind of its weird kind of messy desk montage uh, opening or, or any of these books. Um, the only one that's slightly different, by the way, is X-Men. We'll get to that in a second. But um, you pick up these these books, and it's like, hey, it's another crazy day for the Fantastic Four. And you're, you're okay, so right there, you're skimming past the idea that here's a comic book, you're going to get a story, here's what you're going to get. And some people might point out, hey, it's a little bit unfair because you're talking about individual issue versus a collection. I don't think that matters. I think that whether it's an individual issue or a collection, if you're putting out some marketing, this is not con- this is not comic, this is marketing. If you're putting out some marketing to draw in readers, you need to draw in the readers. It doesn't really matter whether it's a floppy or a trade or whatever it happens to be. The goal is the same. You're trying to get somebody to pick up the book and take it to the register and buy it. So you see this, the Fantastic Four go, ah, they're in another kind of wacky situation. Mr. Fantastic, the guy who stretches. And that's their second mistake is, one, you've assumed people are already aware of comics and kind of the background of this story and why you're picking them in the first place. But then you're going and you're really in a almost demeaning fashion uh, introducing the characters. So you flip over to My Hero Academia. It doesn't say, you know, Deku, the guy who was a completely quirkless wonder who didn't know what he was doing and then got... A to hair, and now he's super strong and powerful, but he's learning how to control himself. You don't, you don't get that kind of the kind of introduction. You get something where the characters are treated in the same respect and treatment as a book. And I've talked to a number of indie creators who believe they're doing this. They believe they're putting out something that kind of shows respect for the source material that that treats the readers with respect. But if they do this test, if they have put manga on the table, they put their book on the table, and they flip through one by one, they notice that the language they're using in their marketing is very different. It's very, uh, it's much more, again, it fits into that uncanny valley of both assuming that the person is already reading a comic, gets it, knows it, life is good, and simultaneously, they are assuming that uh, the person kind of knows nothing about any of the characters and they're wacky characters. We've got to introduce them and, and be all silly with it. That's that's you can't take a super casual approach to this stuff. And that's what it feels like. It's very, very casual. It's casual in the sense of, yeah, we don't need to really pay too much attention about why you should buy this. And it's casual in the sense of let's just treat these characters like they're our old friends and why not? And the problem there you have is, is one, I don't think that even works for long-time comic creators, but we're talking about bringing new people in. And for new people, it sounds both too insider and demeaning at the same time, whereas the tone that manga takes is a lot more like a book. It's describing things, it's pitching it, it's putting it together right. And if you notice, there's a sense in that language, in that marketing, that you are getting a complete story. And what's interesting about that is if you look at trade paperbacks, they don't tell you, they're like, here's the collected comics, 13 through 20, of Kate Bishop's Amazing Adventures in Los Angeles. And you, you're like, okay, but the, does that tell me whether I'm getting a story or not? Something that has like a beginning, middle, and an end. And again, that's where I go to indie comic creators, and I would say, look very carefully at how you're pitching your comic. Are you presenting it as, hey, This is something that you should read. It's a complete story. You're going to get a beginning, middle, and end. Hey, here's some characters. You're going to want to care about them, and here's kind of why. Brave in the sense of saying, you know, this is a sci-fi comic. The other thing that manga does is that it presents itself as, this is a romantic comedy. This is a sci-fi comic. This is It just says. And it doesn't worry that somebody's going to come to it and be like, well, I was looking for a romance comic, but I picked up the sci-fi comic, and now now I don't want it anymore. Uh, yes, that can happen, but it's better that somebody knows that up front. It's about treating, again, your readers with some respect of, this is a sci-fi story, it tells the amazing adventure of blah, 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 and they're going to have a big challenge in front of them, will they be able to resolve it? Let's find out. 
that's kind of the pitch. And if you go over to the traditional comic recap, it's, you know, it just, it messes up in a bunch of areas. It's like after suffering the big battle with the controller in the last story arc, like, wh- why would you begin your recap that way? That's not, it's not helpful to, again, bringing new readers in. It may be helpful as a, a you know, complete standalone recap, but when you're dealing with a 22 page comic, don't write recaps. People don't need that much information. You know, for, for many years, Chris Claremont, Walter Simonson, uh, George Perez, others managed to convey the recap just as the story went along. They assumed that, Hey, if somebody's picking up issue number 163, they probably read 162. And if they didn't, it's going to be interesting enough of a comic that they'll want to go back and find it. So we're not going to worry too much about it. We're not going to do a true recap of the previous issue because that's insulting to the readers. But what we will do, and you'll notice this in older Marvel trades, trades that came out in the 80s and the 90s, you will notice that there's much more of a book feel to how they were packaged and presented. When I say book feel, I mean that recap is the wrong word, but that, that synopsis, that here's what you got. This sounds like a very simple thing, and I'll probably stop this video in a second because I think there's a lot more lessons, but I'll I'll say, here's the first one, and then we'll do more. But this is one, like, if you're a new creator, I I read so many Indiegogos and Kickstarters that completely miss the mark in terms of providing a good synopsis, a good pitch to people coming in and wanting to read it. The pitch is too insider, too silly, too, um, it it assumes a bunch of knowledge the, the reader doesn't have nor maybe once it just there's a lot of aspects about it where it's it's written from the perspective of the person creating the comic not the person buying the comic and that's the big trick it's it, the person who's buying the comic is a person who matter that's the person whose money you want so you got to read it for them you've got to re- write it for them that's what i meant to say what do you think does this make any sense i'll wrap this up here like i said i'm going to do a couple other videos on this topic to really kind of nail down Here's the way it can be done. This is the way. And there's there's some very, very easy steps people can take that will dramatically help their Indiegogos or Kickstarters or whatever it happens to be. Pitches to, to publishers who are trying to get your book across. I want to help you. Um, in addition to just putting your comments below, if you have questions, please ask your questions. I will answer them. I, I want to answer them. Um, you can reach me at uh, comicsperch at gmail.com or comicperch, drop the S, at Twitter. I will help you out any day of the week. You want to send something, have me proofread it. Happy to do it. There's lots of other people too. If you don't trust my judgment, get some, get some outside opinions. That's what I recommend to you. Anyway, like subscribe. I'm here to help, uh, you know, whatever it takes, but mostly thanks for listening. Thanks for being around.